live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reInvent 2016. Brought to you by AWS and its ecosystem partners. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Stu Mint. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here live in Las Vegas for Amazon Web Services reInvent. This is Silicon Angles, theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Stu Miniman. This week, all wall-to-wall -wall coverage for three days. We're going to get all the signal extracted and share that with you. Our next guest, Dick Sturiel, is the managing uh, partner at Ignition Partners, one of the hottest cloud VCs, headquartered in Cloud City, Seattle, but also Palo Alto, where Nick hails from, I'm sorry, Los Altos Los now. Altos now. You guys yes. moved from Palo Alto to Los moved. Altos. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, John. Good to see you again. So you guys had an intimate uh, party last night, which I attended which Frank Artali, your partner, <laughs> always has the best wine. Yeah, he but does. The, the, there was a great guest list there, great insiders, uh, some of your portfolio companies, Amazon folks. And the vibe was very positive on the opportunity ecosystem that Amazon has. As an investor, you're looking at the landscape, that's your big decision point. Yeah. How to get a company funded is easy. Do they have the right stuff is hard. Can they make it in distribution? Yes. And so now that the enterprise battle's at full throttle. Yes. What's your thoughts as an investor? Risk strategy there? I mean, what do companies have to do to be successful? What's your thoughts on this enterprise cloud push? Yeah, so we spend a lot of time enterprise evaluating where are the white spaces, and we try to forecast where Amazon, where Azure, where Google is likely to go, and then try to define areas that a startup actually can have an advantage in because they have a particular domain expertise that's just not native to the DNA of the cloud providers. And, and so we do spend a fair amount of time, but the, the platforms are moving so quickly that it is often hard to figure out what is going to be available from AWS in two years. Uh, it just, the pace of it is very high, so we, have been historically a pretty big infrastructure investor, and we still have several investments in infrastructure, but lately we've moved fairly uh, uh, materially away from it, and we are focused more on applications, services that are applying machine learning to very specific vertical industries yeah. that will take those industries and continue the digital transformation that's happening across the entire landscape. Uh, for the folks watching, Nick was also an investor in Splunk, which went public. I you was. just recently stepped off the board after six years. No, uh, 11. 11, okay. Sorry. Wait, I don't know where six came from. Yeah. Um, I'm losing my mind. Too much wine last night. Yeah. So I want to ask you the question, and this is the issue for startups. It's easy to get to three million, maybe six, but to break through six million in sales and hit that growth curve, you saw that as Splunk. If the world gets sassified, software as a service becomes the standard for businesses, some tech funded, some not. Yes. That is a key equation. Your thoughts, because you've seen that from the front lines with Splunk, which went from machine data that no one gave, cared about yes. to a powerhouse that it is today. They just announced a, uh, the, well, they just announced a blog quarter today. Uh, they're now at a billion dollar run rate, 500 new accounts, almost uh, about 35 million in free cash flow. So it, it staggers me to think that this used to be a three person company in our office that was going to do kind of grip for log files. And interestingly, they went up and down Sand Hill and got rejected routinely by everybody because they thought it was a toy. How many rejections do you think they got? 50? Well, I think certainly over their two fundraising cycles, at least 30. By the way, I was talking to a friend, uh, um, a CEO, he got rejected 52 times, he said, and he knew the number. Uh, so entrepreneurs, you get rejected, that's yes. a good sign. Yes. So let's talk about Splunk. So Splunk actually crossed over. This is uh, the SaaS formula. What's your thoughts? Because this yes. has to be, um, it's evolving, it's changed. What's changed, what's the same? What's your advice on what's happening? Well, so uh, the fundamental premise of doing a startup is that you change an outcome for a user that is so profound, they scream if it goes down. And I think that has never changed. There's a lot of uh, angst about whether or not you're running into competitive levers and what's going to happen, but at the end user level, and that might be a developer, it might be an ops guy, it might be a business user, it might be a marketing analyst, uh, any of those, if you do something and the hair on the back of their neck stands up, there is probably a business there. And so, sometimes we over-rotate too much into assuming away uh, uh, opportunities because of the infrastructure providers or the distribution channel. And I will tell you, 
there will probably be interesting things that everyone says will never work that ends up taking off, which is why the venture business is often kind of an accidental empire. So Stu, I want to get your thoughts, and Nick, if you can comment on this too, because uh, Azure, Microsoft Azure is out there competing heavily. They've turned up their sales forces. Yes. They got their compensation plan. So yes. you see the numbers are starting to come in. I'm a little skeptical on, everyone's been hiding the ball in cloud reporting, and I kind of still think it goes on. But Stu, I was just talking to an entrepreneur and some technical folks, they're saying that Azure is a, a cobbled together uh, service where you got to go through multiple reverse proxies, so it's not really 100% wired effectively, but they're getting there. Your thoughts on the stack wars <laughs> between vis-a-vis -vis AWS, Azure, Google, and, and what, what is the difference between the three players there? Yeah, well, first of all, I mean, if we look at kind of infrastructure as a service, I mean, Amazon just has such a big lead. You know, yeah. when, I, when I look at Microsoft, the first thing, you know, SaaS, they're doing phenomenal. They're moving, you know, I, I think Microsoft has done more for the SaaS model by telling people, your office is yes. going Office 365. Yes. So they gave the green That's light. To, SaaS, they though. gave the green <laughs> light to all enterprises to say, SaaS is the way you should be consuming everything. I mean, Salesforce started early and lots of other companies, but you know, I, I give Microsoft kudos. They're, you know, definitely, I, I don't think Azure is nearly as mature. Um, I, I look at that stack and, you know, early, we're in early previews of Azure stack, but uh, the storage, well, they're going to partner with some people to kind of enhance that. We saw some things with like VMware, some of the same things as to who has some depth in the staff. Microsoft for years has thought that they could work on you know, storage, they can work on networking. I definitely want to talk to Nick about networking because yeah, he's got one of his companies here yes. uh, that we're going to be talking to. Uh, but you know, Amazon, uh, you, you know, what, what, what's the term they always use? There, there's no compression algorithm for experience. So Amazon's been doing this longer. They have the most services. Uh, they have the most depth. Uh, you know, Google has some really good, well, most, you know, I've big been, data and context, everything. But, context of that, the most services for their stuff. Yeah. Like Oracle does for their stuff. Right, but if, if I look at it and I say, say, I want to build an application and put it in the cloud. If I look at Microsoft versus I look at Amazon, I, I've got the most tools in the box uh, to be able to, you know, build on, on on Amazon versus if I go to Microsoft, uh, they're, they're, there's not as much there. Well, uh, so, I mean, net networking's hot. I mean, I, I'm a networking guy by background. You know, networking's one of the last things that finally yes. seems to be changing after so long being dominated by one player. Um, you know, Nick, you know, what, what, what's your I, thoughts I, on this so I, space? My analogy is, I think 2016, if you used to look at the old uh, Japanese sci-fi flicks, this, uh, this year will be King Kong versus Godzilla versus Mothra <laughs> as they all go after enterprise accounts. It is going to be a Bloodbath. bloody shootout. And I think where Microsoft does have an advantage is they do have the account already, and so what they will do and work, and they are all in on re account retention and moving their on-premise business into Azure. And so, for me, it's almost an account retention number as as much as a who's got the better set of services running in the infrastructure So level. I got to ask you the question on that point. We were talking about this earlier with Jerry Chip and Greylock. Uh, you guys are similar, look for billion dollar opportunities. If, if it's going to be a bloodbath, the cost of sales is a huge issue. Yes. Right, so now a startup can't go from zero to market penetration yes. with the cloud, because in the past, let's face it, Box, uh, file sharing company, basically then now full enterprise company, got to where they are because no one was paying attention. Yes. So can there be a, another box, another drop box in this market because now if all the guns are blaring yeah. on the enterprise, we're yes. back to the 90s yes. too. You couldn't get a, a startup into an enterprise without going through you know, all kinds of checks and balances. Is this yeah, but the, the, the thing that is also going on in parallel is if, if you're in Palo Alto, since you're there, if you pick up a rock and throw it, you're going to hit three research outposts from industrial America. The cars, car companies are there, uh, Danher's there, Pearson's there, American Apparel, Walmart. So every industry outside of our tech bubble is scared to death that a team, a small team, is going to build an app that's going to effectively disrupt and then disintermediate an existing industrial business. And so that industry, that entire ecosystem, is an enormous opportunity so we're for talking venture about the firms. Wrong, so we're talking about the wrong thing then. We're talking about yes. shifting the conversation yes. from old way of looking yes. at the market. We're not looking, I, I, like, I don't want to bet on a file server company, I don't want to bet on file, I don't want to bet on a file storage company. 
but if there is an insurance tech play or a autonomous vehicle services play or a healthcare auditing fraud risk analytics play all running on Amazon or Azure, we're all over that. Yeah, it's interesting enough, Uber today, or yesterday I saw the news, they're actually coming out saying they're not a transportation company, but a digital services company. Yes. So that's a great policy politics, and that's good PR by Uber, but they are absolutely in the transportation business. They are. They're disrupting the physical yes. landscape, but using digital as a way to disrupt, yet the real rest of the world so, doesn't know where to put them in a category or not. But so they just, are in transportation, there's no doubt about it, but yet, this is the opportunity. So imagine Uber apply to other industries. That is going to happen in the next five years because of the infrastructure, the systems, the ability to scale, software above the level of a single device, the ability to just collapse workflows that today are open. And I think we are still in the beginnings of a renaissance. And so while I love following King Kong versus Godzilla versus Mothra, I think that's the cloud providers game, and, and for VCs, we're operating at a level above that and looking for yeah. the next generation opportunity. Yeah, Nick, so how about from the cloud networking space? Is yeah. there opportunity there? Yes. Uh, I, I, I think you've got a company that's actually coming on theCUBE next. Yes. Uh, so tell us a little bit about AVI. Yeah, so if you, if you go to all the uh, breakout sessions here, the basic theme of every session is migrate your app, migrate your data, migrate your systems into Amazon. The challenge is, uh, you know, once you have your corporate network up and running, you don't want to touch it. You don't want to touch the routing tables, you, you don't want to do anything that causes an outage. So if you're going to start connecting uh, uh, your VPCs or your private networks running in the cloud, or you're going to move your network to the cloud, you still need a fairly simple connection back to your edge network and your corporate side that uh, requires no changes to the to the usual network admin functions that scares everybody. And so we invested in a company called Aviatrix that effectively gives you secure, elastic networking for connecting enterprise edge to the cloud. So what's the impact of that? Because they're trying to change the game on networking. And you guys are looking at investments like that, and I know you're doing some other ones in the stack cast, Jonathan Gray's company. Yes. Is this a philosophy that you guys are taking on your investments? Now, I mean, because you bring up the digital thing, I think that's very relevant. Yeah. You guys are thinking differently. What, what are you looking at right now? And, and when you, when entrepreneur walks in, because it's clear the cloud has yeah. changed the game on mindset. Completely. Is it an ageism thing? Is it a mindset thing? What is the cloud formula that you look for? When do you know when you see something yes. that gets your attention, and when do you drill down? So, the, the, I've been doing venture capital for 17 years. I started when I was 14. Uh, <laughs> the two things that VCs try to do is they look for platform shifts and generational shifts. And often the generation and the paradox and the platform are tied together. And so what you're looking for is people that are already seeing the wave happen ahead of time from a generational standpoint. And typically uh, they are way ahead of where people are already thinking the game is right now. And so those are, and, so, and they are younger, unfortunately, because they have no legacy encumbrances on things are done this way. They, they you know, it's like you're too young yeah. to know any different. And so we do find often very interesting ideas that take things that everyone thinks will never change and say, I'm just, I'm just going to go after that. And sometimes people do it by accident. I mean, Splunk, from what I heard in the story of their, of their fundraising, was yes. this elaborate system, and their demo was the one that actually got funded. Is that a true story, that the, the whole log file thing was more of a demo of a big elaborate vision? No, so any success story in venture capital, the history of it gets whitewashed away to make it look a lot better. <laughs> so, uh, unfortunately, you know, or fortunately, so that story, for them, that's false. Yeah, that's well. I would call that the enhanced, polished version of the truth. Uh, really, uh, Eric and Rob and Michael built the product that they would have bought had it been vended to them. And they went around and looked at all the vendors, and no one was building anything like this. And then they saw that many engineers, like Cisco engineers, were literally doing Google searches and cutting pasted snippets of code 
and putting it in to their system when there was a fault. And so they just captured that behavior and said, why don't we make that the model that every, and make that as an autonomous system. And then they, of course, a lot of other things around downloading it, making it free in perpetuity. So it was a platform it, shift. Well, it was a, go to, it was a business model shift, it, but it was a five minutes to joy shift. Yeah, so, that so was the big thing. Nick, can't help but notice, there, there's a lot of VCs at the show this year. Yes, uh, we're like mushrooms. Had, uh, a lot of the companies, uh, <laughs> a lot of the VCs that held parties at VMworld yes. shifted it over here. Yes. The question I have for you is, you know, with the new platforms, with the marketplace, with the global reach that kind of anybody can get in software, is there still the opportunity for startups? Can they grow as big? Can they make the margins? You know, can they, you know, really compete in this new platform market uh, as they, they might have a few years ago? Yeah, so the answer is yes. The thing that is critical though is that they have to be doing something that most people in the industry itself think is either stupid or can't be done. On one of those two dimensions. And, and so because it is, you are defeating biases that already exist in the industry and, and that's usually where you see the game changer you know, and if you look at the history of innovation, it always goes from, why would I ever need that, to how could have I lived without it? And, and, and that, I think, is why it's such a great opportunity for us. Nick, final question, your thoughts on uh, what the, this industry's going to turn into on the next wave beyond this show this year. 32,000 people, yeah. obviously the genie's out of the bottle, as you said, uh, this is shift is happening, what's going on? Well, I, I do think, uh, it will force a complete change in the labor force for people that work in the IT business because I think uh, that'll be a playing defense uh, lifestyle for a long time now because the trends are inexorable. I think if you are in an existing in, uh, incumbent business world, if you are not reinventing your business model right now, you are going to be toast. And you can see it even in the companies like GE that have moved from selling jet engines to selling uh, uh, services with the gen engines to selling uptime. And I think you're going to see that kind of evolution across every industrial company. And so, you know, you had better be here figuring it out um, or you are going to uh, be in the unemployment line. All right, Nick, thanks for coming on. Venture capitalists are all here, scouring the landscape, looking for the big deals. Uh, certainly, it's really robust here. Congratulations on your success. Ignition Partners, on theCUBE, I'm John Forrest, we'll be right back with more after this short break.